Nvidia just announced their 3000 series Ampere cards and they destroyed the 2000 series in terms of price to performance. But one trend that we have seen over the past several years is slow incrementing of prices. The GTX 980 came out for $550 in 2014. This then increased to $600 in 2016 with the GTX 1080. Later on, we saw $700 with the RTX 2080 and now we have $700 again with the 3080. The price increases are even more evident when we look at the flagship TI series which started at $650 with the 980 Ti and now stands at $1500 with the RTX 3090. Of course, Nvidia has usually delivered enough of a performance boost to justify their new higher prices. But really, how much do Nvidia graphics cards actually cost to make? Well, starting off, fortunately for us, Nvidia is a public company, meaning that they post their financial results publicly. Thus, working backwards from their quarterly reports will likely give us the most accurate and reliable manufacturing costs, as opposed to trying to reverse engineer the cost of producing wafers and dyes and that sort of thing. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video if you want to find out how much Nvidia profits from their $1500 RTX 3090. But anyways, taking a look at Nvidia's last quarterly report, we can see that they released both GAAP and non-GAAP reports. GAAP stands for Generally Accepted Accounting Principles and is what is mostly used by financial professionals. Non-GAAP is generally just a method that companies use to bolster their financial metrics by classifying some expenses differently. In some cases, non-GAAP is more indicative of a company's financial standing, but this is usually not the case, so we'll stick to the more accepted GAAP report. Nvidia's gross profit margin over the past few quarters has hovered between the high 50s and the mid 60s, so we'll say that on average, Nvidia has a gross profit margin of 60%. However, something to keep in mind is that Nvidia doesn't actually sell most of their cards directly to consumers, at least not in the gaming market. Most individuals in the gaming community buy third-party cards from add-in board partners as they generally have better cooling, overclocking, and you can oftentimes find them cheaper as well as Nvidia's Founders Edition cards basically never go on sale. We don't exactly know how much Nvidia sells their cards for to their add-in board partners, so we'll say that it's about a 20% discount. This would be the same for pre-built manufacturers. Add-in board partners don't have to do too much technical work, it's mainly just aesthetics and cooling, so they don't really need that much margin to pull in a solid amount themselves. Also, we'll assume that the vast majority, or 80% of gaming GPU sales, come from add-in board partners. This means that on the gaming side, Nvidia pulls in 100% of the MSRP on 20% of their cards and 80% of the MSRP on the other 80% of their cards. With that being said, on the RTX 3080, Nvidia would pull in $700 on only 20% of their cards, while they would pull in $560 on 80% of their cards. This means that their weighted average revenue per RTX 3080 sold is about $588. From this revenue, Nvidia has a gross profit margin of 60%, meaning that $352.80 is gross profit. This also indicates that the remaining amount, which is $235.20, is how much it costs Nvidia to actually produce an RTX 3080. Gross profit includes the cost of materials, labor, equipment costs involved in the production, utilities used in production facilities, and shipping costs. Basically, if you already have the blueprints and equipment to build an RTX 3080, $235.20 is how much it would cost you to produce the card and get it to the customer. Something else to consider is that the RTX 3080 likely has a higher gross profit margin than the overall gross profit margin. Lower level cards likely have gross profit margins closer to 50%, while higher level cards have margins closer to 70 or even 80%. Thus, the RTX 3080 likely costs less than $200 for Nvidia to actually produce, 
or about 30% of the final selling price. But of course, you don't get blueprints for free. They cost billions of dollars in research and development. As for NVIDIA, their operating expenses came out to $1.6 billion last quarter. Generally, however, their operating expenses are about $1 billion per quarter. Operating expenses do rise as the business grows, but it's also likely that the pandemic played a role in inflating expenses. Thus, we'll say that expenses should have been closer to the $1 billion mark at $1.3 billion. This means that about a third of their revenue goes towards rent, the equipment itself, marketing, insurance, payroll for employees who aren't part of the manufacturing team, and of course, research and development. Thus, out of the $588 in revenue they get per RTX 3080, right about $200 goes towards the various costs of running a business. This leaves $188 for Nvidia as operating income. At this point, they have to pay taxes, which in their case is not a lot. But nonetheless, taxes pull down their net profit to about $180 per RTX 3080 sold. So here's the rundown for the RTX 3080. $200 goes towards producing the card, $200 goes towards developing the card and running the business, and $8 goes to the tax man. $112 goes to the add and board partner if there is one, otherwise Nvidia gets to keep most of this as well, as a couple of fans and the shroud doesn't cost that much. Finally, Nvidia profits the remaining $180. So if you buy a third party RTX 3080, Nvidia gets roughly $170, and if you buy a Founders Edition RTX 3080, they get about $200. But most people don't buy the RTX 3080. So how does this translate to the RTX 3060? The RTX 3060 has not yet been announced, but assuming that it's the same price as the RTX 2060, we'll call it $350. Again, about 20% will be shaved off, as add-in board partners will be able to buy the 3060 at a lower price from Nvidia. Assuming the same 80 to 20% ratio as the 3080, we get an average weighted price of $294. The RTX 3060 likely has a smaller gross profit margin of about 50%. Thus, it will cost about $147 to actually produce the RTX 3060. With the same third going towards operating expenses, about $100 would go towards running the business and development costs. This leaves just $47 in operating income. Accounting for a couple of dollars in taxes, Nvidia will profit about $40 from each 3060 they sell on average. As for the Founders Edition 2060, however, their net profit is likely closer to $50 to $60. So, after the price dropped to $300 near the beginning of this year, Nvidia was making just about $10 from each RTX 2060. This makes sense as they were just looking to break even and get rid of their RTX 2060 inventory over the next year in order to make room for the 3060. Selling it for break-even prices also helps them to preserve market share against AMD, and considering that most of their profits come from the top cards anyways, preserving market share is much more important than profits with their mid-tier cards. It seems quite self-explanatory, but of course, there's some who don't quite understand this. Anyways, moving on to the 3070, this card is probably the sweet spot for price to performance. The 3060 will likely end up outselling the 3070 due to its lower price, but this is the card to get the best bang for the buck. The 3070 comes in at $500, and assuming the same 20% discount for add in board partners and pre built manufacturers, we get a weighted average cost of $420 per 3070. This card is probably the best representation of their financial report and likely has the same 60% gross profit margin, meaning that manufacturing costs about $170, leaving Nvidia with $250. Giving operating expenses the same one-third of the revenue, we are left with $110. Give $10 to Uncle Sam, and Nvidia profits right about $100 per 3070. With their Founders Edition 3070, this is upwards of $150. And finally, that brings us into the brand new almighty RTX 3090, which comes in at a steep $1,500. With this card, 
it's unlikely that NVIDIA sells them for a 20% discount to add in board partners. The price of the card itself is $1,500, so a 10 or 15% discount is really all that's needed to give add-in board partners a decent profit. At a 15% discount, the weighted average revenue from each RTX 3090 is $1,320. With this card, NVIDIA likely has a very high gross profit margin as the production itself doesn't cost all that much more than the RTX 3060 or 3080, but the price is leagues ahead. Thus, NVIDIA likely has a gross profit margin of at least 80%, and this could be as high as 90%. But calling it 80%, $264 would go towards manufacturing, leaving $1056 for NVIDIA. Unlike manufacturing costs, the RTX 3090 likely cost a lot more money to develop than the 3080 or 3060. So we'll say that the operating expense ratio remains the same at about one third. This comes out to an operating cost of $440 per unit. Nonetheless, the RTX 3090 will likely be able to pull an operating income of about $616. Shaving off another $16 for taxes, about $600 from each RTX 3090 will go straight to NVIDIA's bottom line. For Founders Edition cards, this number balloons upwards of $700. Thus, 40 to 50% of the RTX 3090 price is net profit for NVIDIA. But that probably comes at no surprise, as you guys probably expected something like that anyways. So, at the end of the day, NVIDIA pulls in about $50 from their 60 series, $100 from their 70 series, and $200 from their 80 series. And considering that this is where most of us land, I think these are pretty fair profit margins. Do you guys agree? Comment that down below. And drop a like if you guys are pumped for the 3000 series launch. And of course, consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.